Hi, this is Marcus Fitzmiller. I'm a member of the Enterprise Architecture team at Click. Um, we're going to talk today about using security rules to, to drive uh, access to streams and applications um, and some best practices around that. Um, what we're looking at here is a management console uh, that is just right out of the box. I haven't done anything to it. And I also have a window here um, where I'm logged in as user one. User one is not an administrator or anything like that. They're just a basic user that's logged in and we're using the default rules right out of the box. And as such, they see nothing really at this point. Um, now, when I look at the management console, the only thing that I have done is I've imported um, four apps, apps one through four. And we're going to use those to, um, to show how we can use security rules to grant permissions or grant access to these applications in different ways. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to build a stream um, that we can publish into. And so to do that, I'll come to Start and then Streams. And now I'm going to create a new stream. And I'm going to create a stream that's called um, Sales. Now when I hit Apply, I get a dialog that allows me to create a security rule for this specific stream. And we can see that it belongs to just this stream because of this resource filter, that stream underscore and then a GUID. And this is the GUID of the, the stream that we're building right now. Now, in this um, dialog, I can do tons of stuff. I can say the user, um, if their name is like an asterisk, um, they have access to this uh, stream. And this would evaluate to everyone, so everyone would see the stream. Or I could do, um, if I was hooked up to Active Directory, I would see user.group here. Um, I could do roles. Many things can I do to, to define access to these streams. And you'll find yourself doing this um, uh, quite often. Now, what I want to do, though, is I don't want to build a stream for every thing. I don't want to build a rule for every stream that I'm building. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit Cancel here. And you get, you get a little warning that says you don't have any um, uh, security rules associated with this stream. And, that, and that's true. Um, so we want to build a rule that affects not only this stream, but some others. Um, I'm going to build a, uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to build a finance um, stream as well. And do the same thing. So now I have two streams, sales and finance, but I don't have any rules associated with them. So we want to build... Um, my goal here is to build a singular rule that's applicable to many streams at once. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing that I want to do is leverage custom properties in ClickSense. Custom properties are a very powerful mechanism for defining attributes against all the entities in ClickSense. Users, streams, apps, data connections, you name it. You can define custom properties against it and use these custom properties in your evaluation of your security rules. So um, this custom property that I'm going to build in this case, I'm going to call it um, group, and I'm going to associate it with streams and users. Now, to be clear, if you're using an Active Directory or an LDAP um, or some database where you've got your user attributes defined elsewhere, you don't have to associate it with users. You would just use the user.group property in your security rules. But I'm not hooked up to an Active Directory right now. I'm trying to keep this demo nice and clean. So I'm going to use the custom properties for users as well. But you don't, you don't really have to. Um, so the values that I'm going to build for this um, custom property are sales and finance. And as you can imagine, what I'll do now is I'll come back to those um, streams that I just built. Oops. And for my sales stream, I will give it a, a group of um, sales. And for my finance stream, I will give it a group of finance. Now, um, in ClickSense 2.1, you can also do it's many, uh, one to many, so you can have multiple groups for these, but for this example, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So, um, sales group um, has a sales custom property, finance stream has the fi finance um, custom property. Now, the last thing we want to do now is use those custom properties in a security rule, a singular security rule that is intended to be applicable to multiple. Um, to, to multiple streams. How am I going to do that? I'm going to create a new stream. I will choose the rule template of stream access and um, I like to give them names 
that look like this, where I have my, my company name, um, stream rule, and then a little bit of a description of the name. And then, of course, you can have a, a bigger description down here uh, of the, the intent of this rule. So the intent of my rule here is to um, grant access to streams at a stream level, um, as opposed to an application level, which we'll do here in a minute. And you can see the difference is this stream that I, this rule that I just built, that I'm building right now, um, has a resource filter that's got a wildcard, an asterisk. And uh, as opposed to the other stream rules that we, uh, that, that we were going to build that had GUIDs, this resource filter is now applicable to um, all streams because it's got a filter with an asterisk in it. And now similarly, I could build some really interesting rules here. I could say, you know, um, username is star, and now that says everyone sees access to every rule. In fact, let's hit apply, and let's see if um, let's see if that's true. When I hit refresh, this person person should see sales and finance streams. Sure enough, they do. Now there's nothing in them, but um, we can see those. Now that's not really what we're after, though, right? But that's a a real simple example of showing how a single rule can affect multiple streams. But really what I want to do is I want to build a rule that says this, group user group equals stream group. And now as you can imagine, um, when I when the, the rules engine runs, it's going to look at the groups that a user is associated with. And this uh, incidentally can be Active Directory as well um, by using the user group property. But here's the, the, the attributes that are associated with a user. It's going to be evaluated with the custom property that's associated with the stream. And if it matches, it, they're going to have access to that stream. So if I hit apply, what's going to happen right now? Well, if I come back out, everything's going to disappear, right? Because user one doesn't have any custom properties associated with them. But if I come back now, and I choose that user, here's user1, and I give them a custom property of, say, sales, well, what's going to happen? They're going to now see the sales stream. Okay? So this is a way, and, and now what we'll do is we'll publish into the sales stream, and we'll keep working from there. But as a recap of that first point, what I can do is rather than building a single secu a security rule for every stream, I can use techniques like these to have many um, streams be affected by a single security rule. Okay, now we're going to take this even further. So what do I want to do next? I want to take this these four applications and I'm going to publish them to the uh, sales stream. We'll work just within sales now because um, on the finance stream, the, the, the concept is totally the same. But for now, what I want to do is publish all four of these apps to the, uh, to the sales stream. And sure enough, I can see all four apps right over here right now. Now, this is pretty good, right? I can now say, look, if I belong to the sales group, I can see the apps in the sales stream. Or if I belong to the finance group, I can see the apps that belong to the finance stream. Um, and I can see... All of that, and all of that can be managed with a single rule. What happens if I wanted to do some kind of exceptions? Maybe I wanted to say um, application, say, 3, is something that um, is a little bit more sensitive or um, needs to be managed at a, at a different level of grain. Well, one way that you could do that is you could say, I'm going to build a, a stream that says sales executive or sales, you know, secure or so, whatever, something that designates um, this app to be different and then just simply publish it to that that um, stream. And that's out of the box behavior you, uh, and that's um, that's easily achieved. But what happens if I wanted to have this application show up or not for different users but still belong in the sales stream where applications 1, 2, and 4 are administered at a, at a stream level? Well, how would I go about and do, do that? So what I'm going to do here is um, take this a little bit further, and I'm going to build another custom property. And the custom property that I'm going to build is going to be called um, Application Level Management, like that. And I'm going to associate that with an app and a user. And the values that I'm going to put in the, this custom property really um, uh, are dependent upon the, the client. And maybe for this scenario, we're doing um, application level um, 
management because these are executives that, that need to see these particular apps, whereas other folks can't. Um, now, again, you can you can actually just publish things to its own stream in this situation, but we're, we're trying to do something a little different here. So um, I'm going to build sales and finance executive custom properties as well. That is going to be associated with apps and users. Now, again, just by creating this, this doesn't do anything in and of itself. We need to modify a few things. Um, and what I'm going to do now is come over to the... Um, the security rule, the default stream rule. Now this default stream rule that's out of the box basically says uh, um, if we're looking at apps and you have access to read the stream then you can see that application and that's what's managed, that's what's driving this behavior right now. So we want to tweak that a little bit. Now um, my preference is to not modify the out-of-the-box rules and in fact we create a new one that, that mirrors it so I'm going to just disable the out-of-the-box rule for stream and what do you think happens if that happens well if I come over here and I hit refresh then sure enough you know we're not going to see those apps anymore um, even though we can see the stream we don't see the apps okay um, so let's continue and what I'm going to do now is build a security rule that's similar to the stream rule, but a little bit different. So if I hit um, create new, I will give this a app access template. I will give it a name um, similar to the last one that designates that this is the default rule that manages the behaviors of apps. And um, the, the, the condition that I'm going to give is the original stream rule. This is the original rule, but I'm going to actually add one more piece to it. And the piece that I'm going to add to it is right here. And it says, if this app has a custom property that is empty, well then it's going to adhere to the behavior uh, of um, showing that app. Um, so this is basically just like the original stream rule, but it's also going to check to see that this property is, is, not, um, is empty. So if I hit apply here, um, because I haven't um, assigned that property to any app, when I come back to the screen, I would expect that those apps show up again. And sure enough, they do. Okay. Um, so now we have a, a way of controlling at an app level whether something shows up or not. So what do I want to do? Well, for app 3, because maybe this is the app that's sensitive in nature, I want this app to be... Um, something that only the sales executives see and I hit apply. Now as you can imagine user one is not tagged as a sales executive so because of um, having assigned that um, when I hit refresh again app 3 should disappear for this person. And sure enough it does. So what have I done? Well in effect I built a security rule um, a singular rule so far that says um, as long as the application isn't being managed at an application level in some way using this custom property, well, then we're just going to use the default behavior out of the box, which is if you have access to the stream, then you can see the um, apps within it. And we've accomplished half of our goal because now we can man manage most apps at, an app, at, a, at a stream level, but we want to still be able to grant permission to this app 3 to, to other people. Um, so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to do it with one more rule. Um, I'm a, a believer of um, having these rules kind of broken down so that they're uh, conceptually easy to get your head around. And while this is the default rule for streams that we just built, I'm going to build one more. That is called apps exception rule. And this particular rule now is also going to have a resource filter of app um, star. But the rule is going to be this. Um, similar to the original rule, uh, I want to make sure that this, I can actually see the stream, right? And then once I can see the stream, I also want to be um, a, a, I want to be a person who's got this app level management um, tag on my user ID. And so long as it ties out to one of those apps that are flagged as such, I'm going to be able to see that app as well. So what does this mean? Well, if I hit apply here and validate the rule um, and I hit apply, um, again, nothing is going to happen. If I come over to my screen here and I hit F3, uh, sorry, F5, 
well, nothing happens, I still don't see it. But now what I can do is, if I'm a user who is, say, um, someone who should see some of these more specific apps, like I am a sales executive and I hit apply and I come back, well, sure enough, I can see app three again. So in essence, what this allows me to do is have um, a few rules that manage um, uh, manage your access. Now let's come back and review them. Uh, come to security rules. Now the first one here is um, a rule that governs the the visibility of the streams themselves. Right here, the everyone's the, the sales, the finance streams. Remember we created sales and finance. This stream here has a resource filter of stream star, and this is one that says as long as I belong to the group that matches the group on the stream, I can see that stream. And now the question is, how do I manage the apps within that stream? And I have two rules to do that. The first rule is my default rule, which is just like the out-of-the-box stream rule, which is all right here that says, hey, if you can see the stream, then you can see the apps within it. But I have a small modifier that says, and by the way, we want to make sure that these apps aren't um, being managed at an application level. And now this will encompass all of the apps that aren't flagged as application level managed. So to cover off this last point now, I'll come back and I have an app exception rule that handles those apps that are managed at an application level. And the rule for that is simply to say, similarly, as long as I can see the stream that I have, uh, as long as I can see the stream, I will be able to see the app within it provided I have the same um, the same uh, custom property assigned to my name as I do as the app has assigned to it. And this is um, you know this is one of many ways that you can do this sort of thing, but um, I think is a, a nice and simple way and illustrates a, a lot of points of how to do um, single rule to manage many uh, streams, um, a single rule to um, to manage the apps within those streams and then a single rule to manage at an application level um, some exception management as well. Uh, hope this helps and thanks a lot. Take care.